Hi everybody. I obviously love talking about photography and today we're talking about iPhone photography. This is just going to be a quick run through of how to create better photos and video using just your iPhone. Um, no other equipment really. This is meant to be very basic. So if you know a lot about photography, this one might not be for you. Um, I'm just teaching you how to utilize your phone better um, and how to make better use of the equipment that you already have. So our goals today are going to be to improve the quality of the content you create right in your iPhone um, and learn how to use the iPhone more effectively. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks um, that I love to use, um, things that are available right in the phone. And these are things that I typically when I show friends, they're like, well, how did you know how to do that? So super simple, um, but very effective. So some things I want you to consider when you are thinking about taking a photo using your iPhone or any piece of equipment. Um, the first is light, good light over everything, every single time I've taught a couple other similar classes to this in the past for insiders. Um, and anytime I talk to anyone, even my own photography clients, if you don't know me, um, although I'm the founder of beyond boss, I am also a professional photographer and I have been for 15 years. So, I always tell people like good light over a good location. If you're from Pittsburgh, you know, Phipps, everybody loves Phipps. Everyone wants their photos taken in Phipps. And I tell them all the time, Hey, look, just because something has a beautiful floral backdrop doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be the best spot for photos. If the light is for instance, blasting you in the face or there's no light. Um, and so Phipps is a good example of that because while there are some rooms that are stunning and they have these beautiful locations, they have no great natural light. So then you're bringing in lighting and it's a whole thing. So for the purposes of iPhone photography, it's really important to note that having good light is everything. Um, and I'm going to dive a little bit more into this. Um, but I really do want to note that this counts for talking on your story. It counts for creating reels. It counts for taking selfies. Use a window for the love of God. <laughs> We're going to dive into this more. Um, but I just really wanted to get that out there. If you watch no further, please just take that to heart. Stop sitting in dark rooms and creating Instagram stories. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about, we're also, or we're also going to talk about composition and this is how the elements of your image are set up, your image or videos. So where things are, and I'm going to walk you through, I found a great infographic that I wanted to share with you guys and explain a little further about it. And then also the use where you're going to be utilizing your image um, or video. So for the purposes of this class, um, we are going to be focusing on natural lighting. I'm not going into how to light things with off camera lighting. Um, I'm going to tell you some things to avoid both for indoor and outdoor lighting for photography. Um, for lighting your photos and videos indoor, again, you want to look for abundant window light. So let's say that this computer screen is my window. I'm going to get the best light for a photo or video um, for any piece of content. If I am indoors, if this window light is facing me, if it is um, coming towards me, um, it depends on what your vibe is. If you're more light and airy, not only do you want to be sure that you have window light hitting your face and you're evenly lit, um, that's going to look the best, but you also want to make sure that there's a light source behind you that is not necessarily like an overhead light. Um, and that's not always an option, but one of the things that, um, I always look for in my home, I, I kind of record in the same spaces because they always look the best for natural lighting. Um, and so obviously, you know, as a photographer, when I built my house, I <laughs> took, there's a lot of windows in this house and I hate to say it's for this reason, but it's for this reason. Um, you want to avoid tungsten lighting, which is going to be kind of your standard light bulb. It's they're very, very yellow right now. I do have, um, an led light, but I picked the color specifically because it was best for skin tones for things like this after dark, I'm recording after dark. Um, but you really want to try to avoid them. So if you have good window light, turn off lamps with yellow bulbs. And also if you're recording in a sp the same space fairly often, you might want to take some time to find light bulbs that are best um, and do give the most natural light look. Um, I can link some in the recording. If you're watching the recording of this class, if you're watching live right now, um, you can refer back once it goes live in your portal. 
Um, and you also really kind of want to avoid for video specifically, a lot of LED lighting. I do have a lot of like overhead um, LED recess lights in my house and I don't always love them for recording client content and flat lay um, video type things in my kitchen. And so we just turn them off. If you have good natural light, you don't need those overhead lights on. Um, and then you definitely want to be shooting photos and video during the day if possible, especially reels. You know, if you feel like the only time that you can do it is after kids go to bed, um, then maybe you want to add ring lights if you're in a very low light situation. But again, you are looking for light lighting temperature that is as close to natural light as possible, not making you too blue or too yellow. If you are outdoors, um, I want you to look for nice, even shade. Again, if there's one thing you take away from this lighting conversation is that you want to have um, even light across your face, across your body, across your subject's face and body, or across the object that you're photographing. You don't want to have big, um, unless it's a stylistic choice, obviously, this is fine, but just if it's kind of a random choice that you're making shooting a photo or video, you don't want to have big patches of shade with big, hot, very overexposed patches of lighted objects or people. Um, so if you're, especially if you're photographing people or yourself with a self timer, you really want to look for nice, even lighting, especially across the face. The last thing you want is for this side of your face to be so bright that you can barely see it. And this side to be so dark that it's in shadow. Again, if this is a stylistic choice, you do you, that's fine. Um, just as an example, um, for this next part, which is going to be backlighting, if you can't find shade and it's really, really bright out, you just want to try to kind of get the sun back behind your subject's head and you may have to play around so that it's not really hazy, but these, um, flowers are a good example. They're backlit and you can tell that the sun is coming from back behind them. Um, or at least I can, I don't actually know if that's common sense or if it's just a lot of experience, but you can tell that the sun um, is coming back behind these flowers. And then you want to avoid, if you're photographing yourself or another person, you want to avoid having them look directly at the sun or having really bright light looking at them. And if you're doing that, just pop some sunglasses on. The last thing you want is this great outfit or this great, you know, the person's in a great outfit or it's a great subject or whatever. And you just like sunlight in your eyes. Try to avoid that. So this is the infographic that I found at bsujournalismworkshops.com. Um, these are just some photo basics and we are applying them. We're going to ignore the thing about aperture and speed here, um, shutter speed and aperture. I'm sorry. Um, but what the first thing we want to think about is in terms of composition is going to be our rule of thirds. So essentially you want to divide any frame into nine boxes. You can add the grid onto your iPhone camera if you're shooting this way, but this is kind of just what you want to think about. So the subject is going to be intersecting one of your lines or these circles, and you don't necessarily want to have your subject right smack dab in the middle. It's a little less visual and in, visually interesting unless you are um, doing it on purpose. Um, we are going to think about leading lines. So you can think about the way that lines in a photo kind of lead the subject's eyes to where you want them to go. So some things to think about would be, um, if you are shooting on steps, you think about the railings being leading lines. If they're in the middle of the road, the side of the road is leading lines. So um, it's just something to take into consideration. Um, you want to think about framing. So what is around the objects? Um, you want to think about um, how those things that are around the object just draw the person, someone's eyes to the subject of the photo. Um, we want to think about the balance of the photo. So this is going to be if your main subject is off center, um, utilizing that rule of thirds, for instance, you want to have something to kind of balance the weight of that subject. Um, and it's not going to be as big of an object, for instance, um, it'll be a, as it'll be less important than the main subject. You definitely want to think about the viewpoint when you're kind of considering the composition of your image. Um, for instance, a lot of people don't love having their photo taken from below. Um, so a lot of people don't like, like looking down on a camera. It's not always the most flattering. Um, and you know, it, depending on what it is, you don't necessarily want to be like up above them. So sometimes eye level is good, slightly below, slightly above, but just kind of taking into consideration, especially if it's yourself and you're setting it up on a tripod, um, symmetry, you can go either, um, 
asymmetrical or symmetrical? Are things the same on both sides or are they different? So I want you to think about what you're using your images for, your video, is it gonna be for your blog? Is it for an Instagram story, feed posts, paid ads, reels? All of these things are really important things to consider. Um, and you wanna consider the dimensions that you're gonna need for um, an image or a video. So if you are doing, if you need a full body shot for your Instagram feed, say it's for a collaboration or you wanna show off an outfit, you wanna make sure that you shoot that photo a little bit wider and you leave more room for negative space for cropping. If you're making a TikTok or a reel, you wanna think about when you're shooting it, where does the text need to go? So do you need to be a little bit further back? Do you need to be closer up? Where is the text going? So, you know, if you want the text to be back above you, you really just wanna take um, the composition of that video into consideration. So let's go into how we're using our phones um, to just get better quality content. Um, so a couple things that you should know. The first one is locking your focus. So in order to do that, you're going to point your camera at your subject, hold your finger um, on the subject. So on the screen, like as you can see here in this example, you're going to hold your finger there until you're going to see that little box pop up. That you're also going to see this AE slash AF lock on the screen. Now you're going to take your photo. This works for both photo and in cinematic view. Um, if you're shooting video in cinematic view on newer iPhones, this is going to lock the focus of the camera onto whatever you have decided um, you want it to lock on. It has autofocus, but this is just a better way to make sure that what it's locking on is what you actually want it to lock on, not what the camera has determined that you should be locking it onto. Um, sliding for exposure is a really fun little trick. If it's really bright or really dark out, you can, while you have locked the focus, another box will pop up there and that is going to have this little sunshine. You can just drag your finger up and down on the little um, sunshine there and it will either make it lighter or darker. So one of the things, um, if you want to be lightening things up in post-processing or whatever, um, this is a great way to do some of that and do it before um, you before you go into post-processing. So just getting it right on camera at, in the beginning. Um, if, if it's brighter out, this is a good way to kind of darken things up just a smidge. And then depth of field. Um, I have a little video here that I'm showing you, but you're going to tap that little F icon on the upper right hand of your screen in either portrait or cinematic view. And you can drag and drop it um, or drag it side by side, back and forth um, in order to increase or decrease the depth of field, which is basically going to be the amount of blur in the background. Um, a smaller number is going to equal more blur, which will look a little bit more like a professional camera typically. Um, and so you can see that that is something that you can totally do in either portrait or cinematic mode in your iPhone camera application. So a few just quick additional tidbits that I want you to think about. Um, purchase mobile presets. You don't have to spend a bunch of money on them, but you want to get really familiar with using Lightroom Mobile for photo editing um, on your phone. So it's going to allow you to edit your images with the same look every time, but I really want you to get in there and just really start to play with exposure, things like contrast, sharpening, adding grain, um, changing color temperature, all of those things are going to really help familiarize you with how you want to shoot your photos before you ever think about editing them. So they're going to help you understand what your editing, editing applications are capable of so that you're not making mistakes that are unfixable in post-processing. Um, so really get into Lightroom Mobile. It's a free application and it is the mobile version of what professional photographers use to edit their images. Highly, highly, highly recommend just playing with photos, seeing what works. And it's, again, going to really help you when you are out actually shooting the photos to not make some of those mistakes that can't be corrected. Um, and then also, I highly recommend if you do not already own, own one, purchase an iPhone tripod. Thank me later. You can shoot content of yourself using the self timer or you can use it to shoot content of other people or other things. They're great for reels, but they're also really great for um, pictures of yourself and things um, for your business or your blog or your creator account um, so that you don't have to have an Instagram husband follow you around. You can just do it yourself.
Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm always available for questions. You can email me at hello at caitlin-thomas.com. You can DM the The Boss account or DM me on my personal Instagram, which is at Caitlin Thomas, or my photo Instagram, which is at Caitlin Thomas underscore portraits. Thank you so much.